everybody. This is another episode of the Revenue Throughput Podcast. This is your host, Jose Palomino. And today we will be interviewing Mark McKinnis. He's joining us from Sydney, Australia. And Mark's specialty is that very front end of the sales pipeline, that whole lead generation area. He is a sales trainer par excellence, and he will share with us some tidbits, some real insights on how to take advantage of what's happening right now in the world of lead generation, of outbound outreach in 2022, how to do it right, and how to avoid some of the traps that people are falling into right now, especially now as we enter into this second and hopefully soon to be last year of this pandemic and just what he advises his clients to do. So without further ado, let's welcome Mark to our show. Well, welcome Mark to the Revenue Throughput Podcast. Jose, thank you very much. Uh, delighted to be here and looking forward to sharing some some tips and tricks with your audience. Oh no, I'm very much looking forward to that. Thank you. I think it's uh, I think it's like 8.30 in the morning your time, like 4.30 in the afternoon mine. You're you're in beautiful Australia right now, as I and uh, I'm outside of Philadelphia. So you know who's the smarter guy there? <laughs> well, I'm, to, I'm in tomorrow, <laughs> so it's tomorrow here. <laughs> oh, you're in tomorrow. All right, there you go. So we're we're moving to the future. So so Mark, for for our audience, I think it's helpful if you just tell us a little bit about you know uh, what do you do and who do you do it for primarily. Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, so. Um, the business that I have is a consultancy firm and, and we're a sales training consultancy that work, helps mid-market businesses, particularly in, in, in tech, FMCG and fin services, generate more pipeline. So front of the funnel, outbound sales training consultant. Okay, great. I love the, the conciseness of that. It's very quick that you can understand what it is. So for those of you listening, you know, we talk a lot about value prop on this podcast. And uh, this is a, a really crisp way that Mark just described what he does. So I love that. And, and in line with that, Mark, I understand, uh, you know, as somebody who helps people do uh, outbound, reaching into the market and so on, your message for 2022, as I understand it, is slow your roll, do a little bit less of that. And that seems a little counterintuitive for somebody who helps people do more of that. So <laughs> maybe you could shed some light on that. Yeah. Okay. So, look, you know, the, the the quick takeaway is is um, you know we got I want us to slow down the process of outbound to speed up our results. Okay. And and there's some really strong data that's available for everyone to check it out. So HubSpot, which is a CRM, I think a lot yeah. of people on this call would probably understand or know what HubSpot is. You can actually go and Google um, and find HubSpot's uh, in data. It's a readily available. And what they do is track the amount of outbound that's going, you know, phone calls and emails that are logged through their CRM system. And of course, they've got, got quite a few customers across the world, like a lot. So it means mm. that with the data is really, really good. It's really valuable. Sure. Um, and um, you can actually filter that data via regions and via industry types, you know, so whether it's recruitment or, or industrial or marketing consultant, whatever the case may be. And remember, this is the clients that are using the CRM. And, and if I look at APAC, which is where I specialize in, with my business, um, you look at the data for email, sales email sent. So think about a sales rep sitting in their, their office and they go they're in HubSpot and they're typing an email to Jose to try and get your business. They, they log that as a sales email going out, right? So it's not all emails, it's just the emails that are sales based. Right. When you compare 20, January 2020 to November 2021, the amount of sales emails in APAC have increased by 226%. Wow. Right? And but it was it wasn't time, like they were there was it wasn't as if there wasn't a lot going on in 2019. It was already doing a lot, right? To begin with. Yeah, yeah. So if and I think a lot of people would already know that there's a lot of email activity going on. Um, and if you have a look at the response rates, you can use the, you can also view this on in HubSpot, which is really easy to do. Uh, the response rates in APAC have reduced by 38%. So if you were getting 20 email responses out of 100 before, mm -hmm. you're now getting 12. Okay. Right? So, and that's why people are now sending 226% to try and increase the amount of responses to get back to 20 or 22 responses. Right? So what's really happening is, you know, we're typically just spamming our clients, you know, our prospects more and more and more. And because sales tech is so good, you know, you, we used to just 
call the phone book, right? Now right. you've got all these great tools like Zoom Info and all these list building companies. So you put in the filters. You go, I want to talk to VP of sales with businesses that have got more than $10 million in revenue that have got you know more than 10 salespeople that are located in these geographical areas that have these, you know, that are in tech, that are in fine fin services, that are in whatever. That shoots out a list of five or 6,000 people and I can now market to them very specifically knowing that that's, that's going to be my target market. Everybody knows that. So everybody's doing that. Right. And, and the results so, that are so on the receiving in. end, people are feeling this. I'm feeling it. I mean, I, my, you know, I turn on my email in the morning, I look at my phone and it's it delete, 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 delete. I, I no longer even bother going through the unsubscribe process. And I get a lot of emails that don't even identify the company they're with to say, Hey, this is Joe. And I say, who are you, Joe? <laughs> why are you, why are you reaching out to me? And you're going to solve my SEO problems or what have you. Yeah. Yeah. So look, I mean, I mean you know, we're all seeing that. So what I'm saying is we need to, you know, take stock, slow the process down, stop thinking about marketers, stop trying to scale our business and put the human function back into it. You know, so think about quite deliberately about breaking your, your, your piece of outbound um, down into really small little niches and being significantly more deliberate about how you, how you reach out so that you're starting conversations. Because that's what we should be measuring, right? We should be measuring how many conversations that we're having every week. Most businesses tell me, you know, I don't have enough leads and they operate from a, a place of scarcity, you know, so I don't have enough, how can I drive more? But in actual fact, what I think is happening is we're just not having the right types of conversations in our outreach. We're not talking about the right topics, right? Whereas if we slow that down and we deliberately chunk our, our prospect list into smaller pieces, we're going to have a better, we can afford to have a better quality of conversation. Okay, well, now th that seems, though, pretty labor intensive on the front end to think about, you know, because most people would prefer to have, can I just have a real, the winning sales letter? You know, like I want yeah. the sales letter because boy, if I get that letter and you know what, if I, like Jay Abraham would talk about somebody with a bleeding neck. So somebody has a bleeding neck and you say, I have the bleeding neck cure, boom. And that's why, that's the justification behind doing volume because I don't care about the people that I keep, that aren't interested in me now anyway. I'm interested in landing in the inbox at the moment in time when somebody has a pain that I can uniquely solve. But now the dynamic you're talking about is it's being buried under everybody else's attempt to do the same thing. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And and, and, I, and what, what I prescribe is that, you know, that the follow-up process, and I'm sure everyone's talk understands sequencing, you know, email sequencing. Mm -hmm. So you send two or three emails, you know, maybe two days apart. Um, is that we should be sprinkling those with real outreaches across multiple channels. So whether that be, you know, a, a text message. So that's legal here in Australia. We can do that. I know that's not so popular in, in, in the US. Um, you know, or phone calls, you know, social media outreaches, all those sorts of things. And, and because you'll need, because our inboxes are overflowing and people aren't responding to your point, you said you don't even block them anymore, right? <laughs> right? So we've got to do more to stand out. So, so instead of sending three emails through automation, we have to send three emails potentially through automation um, and, and back that up with a, a phone call, a text message, you know, and, a, and an outreach on social. So it is more labor intensive, but you're more likely to get a response. So we don't really, we can continue to do more. So, you know, that 226% increase mm -hmm. in emails becomes 500%, or we can be more deliberate and increase the quality. I think it's very clear where we need to go from here. So, so is that, I mean, I, I realize you, you, you know, you have a whole training organization based on this, but, but uh, Mark, I'm, I'm thinking about the skill set, right? So it's one thing to have somebody like, you know, uh, reading script you know, on the headset, auto dialing the next person on the list. But what you're describing is something that's a little bit, that requires a little bit more thought in terms of before I dial that phone or before I send that email. So is that a different person for like to, to be an SDR or anything like that? Is it, are, we, are we looking at recruiting different talent? No, so it, 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 there is a little bit more work on the front end. And what I mean by that is, is when you, you've got your SDR, for example, let's say you've got three people making outbound calls for you, you know, trying to drive um, new business leads for your business, whether you call them SDRs, BDMs, or whatever the mm -hmm. case may be. So typically a business will say, this is our target audience, right? Instead, what I'm saying is get that target audience and dissect that into groups of, mm -hmm. that are significantly smaller and look for common commonalities. So for example, um, it might be, 
you know, people that have are in a certain geographical location that are using a certain technology and perhaps are growing their business spot. And we can see through LinkedIn and through their careers page that they're hiring people in one particular vertical, right? So let's just say, say they're hiring salespeople, for example, right? So so we we can say, hey, you know, Jose, it looks like you guys are employing new SDRs. You're in, you're in the tech space. Um, chances are you want to get those SDRs up ramping as quickly as possible. What are you going to, I've got some great ideas around how you can do that in, in two or three weeks instead of the standard couple of months. Would you like to see some of that information, for example? Right, so, so it's a significantly more direct message. H how do you get that for yourself? All you do is workshop that conversation with your, the people inside your organization, what's important to that buyer. Right, because what happens is in order for our messaging to be more effective to more people, we have to broaden it. Yeah. And this yeah. is where we, we become, we start saying things like we want, do you want to save time and money? Our software saves you time and money. Right. Right. Whereas if you can say, well, your, my software will help, you know, tech businesses put their two or three new starters on faster. You know, you can find those employees faster or you can ramp them, whatever it does. Right. So, spe so specificity, specificity is powerful. That's one. And, and, the, and an exact example you gave, which one thing I like as a technique is you asked the question, would you want to know more about this? You didn't just hit them with here uh, attached is the 72 slide pdf that you haven't asked for you may not be interested in so you start getting more of an engagement or more of a conversation and say okay that sounds you got me you piqued my interest send me what you got and that maybe even invites well would you like me to you know happy to send it i could walk you through it on a call what would you prefer and now we're having conversations you got it, you got it. And and so this is exactly what I mean by slow down to speed up, right? So the marketing department will say, why would you add that extra step? Include the link, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? But you're losing, as a salesperson or as a business developer, you're losing the opportunity to see who's interested at all, right? Because we all know that, you know, in, in case you don't know, you know, the, the people that, that, the salesperson that introduces the idea first has a one in three chance of winning the business. Right, so even if people don't like your business and you're the person that comes up with the idea, they'll go, "That's a great idea. Let's Google, you know, who, some other suppliers." Right. And typically, you've got a one in. If you're the person that introduces the idea, you've got a one in three chance of, of, of winning that business. Right. So, and I think that's I think that's Salesforce data from 2020. Okay. Well, and and it makes sense intuitively, right? You you've you've opened the conversation. They maybe weren't thinking about that in that way, and all of a sudden, huh? And you, you know, you always rather be, at, you know, the incumbent in the lead, you know, there, there's no value necessarily thinking, well, I'll just have a master strategy and I'll come up from behind. No, like it's good to be in front if you can just yeah. keep, keep that pace if you can and, and make it, it sounds like what you're telling us, Mark, is to make it very interactive, find ways to create interactivity. Correct. So, so, so when you reply to my email, I say, yeah, I'll be interested in seeing that link or I'll be interested in seeing that document. Right, resist the urge to just shoot it back. Pick up the phone and call them. Hey, Jose, I just got your email. I thought it'd be worth more. Like, so, so you know, if even if they don't respond, you're creating a situation where you're significantly different to all the other automated yeah. outreach. Right. So, you know, and if they don't respond, you can shoot them a text where that's legal and it's certainly okay here in Australia. You know, and and rather than ask for a response, you, you know, you'd say, Hey, Jose, look, it's it's Mark. I, I completely understand you're not picking up from a number that you don't know because no one picks up numbers that they don't know. Right, sure. Um, I don't anymore <laughs> at all, ever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going to shoot through that link. Um, you know, the subject line of the email is blah, be on the lookout for that, right? So I'm not even asking for a response, but what I'm doing is getting my voice into their sure. ear and, and you know, um, familiarity. The more I hear you, the more I see you, the, you know, the more sure. I recognize you, the more likely I'm going to be responding to you. So... Again, you know, it's slowing down the process. Instead of trying to scale and reach as many people as possible, it's about picking those niches, working those niches through with one really strong message that can only be relevant to, you know, that couple of hundred people, and then moving to the next one. And that's a different message. And I mean, it could be along the same lines, but it would have a different specificity unique to them. Yeah, so instead of talking about the problems that recruiters are having, for example, you know, it, we might be talking about the, the challenges, um, industry might be having with with 
freight capacity issues, for example, sure. and, and how our software might help them. Might be the same piece of software, right? but it helps right. recruiters in a very different way to the way that it helps um, importers and exporters. What we typically do is, as business owners, as we say, we've got this great software that helps everybody and it helps everybody be super efficient and basically we help them make more money and save them a heap of time. And then that's what ends up happening with our SDRs is they go, oh, well, I've got this great list. How do I scale that? I need that message to be quite broad and it loses its relevance and it just ends up being that spam that we all. And, and, and the other thing too, Mark, is the technology, I mean, you can scale multiple messages. You, I mean, it's not, it's, it just takes the upfront work to plan it, to think it through. And, and you know, the other side of that too, as, as you're talking, what really struck me is, well, I should know what this specific problem I'm solving is. Just as a sales professional, I shouldn't be calling somebody saying, well, we have a thing that kind of helps people like you, but I'm not sure, you know, no, it should be very specific. We deliver this kind of result. We reduce cycle times. We, you know, we increase your margin effectiveness, whatever it is that we do, but be specific to that audience so they can say, ah, this person knows my business. They know what we're about, you know, what we're about and what we're doing. So I think that's very powerful, Mark. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And, and the easiest way to do that is you just, when you start one of those campaigns, so, you know, let's say today we're going to start talking to recruiters. Today's the very first day. You get your SDR, SDR team or your BDM team to sit down and you just do like a, an hour's worth of workshop. You know, what are the challenges that they're facing? How do we help them specifically? How can we prove that? Chances are you've got case studies. Chances are you've got customers already. If you don't know that information, then all you do is call those customers up or get them in on a Zoom call and say, you know, how do we make a difference? And, and make sure you dig down so that they say, well, what I really like about your software, for example, mm -hmm. is that I no longer have to do this. Now, when they say something like that, you can then go and ring everybody that looks like those customers. So recruiters, if we right. use that example, and say, hey, man, you know, like, are you sick and tired of doing this all the time? <laughs> and they go, yeah, well, you know, our, that's what our customers tell us. And we help them stop doing that. And straight away, it's super relevant, super specific, and you don't sound like everybody else. Right. And it's not that 72 page uh, PDF attachment that no one's going to read anyway. So, so as you look out of 2022, one is uh, so clearly prospects and we're all either selling or prospects too. We're both are going to continue to get buried by lots and lots of messages. The technology kind of allows sales teams and marketing teams to scale up mass messaging very quickly so everybody can you know anybody can get mailchimp and just boom here's a list let's just send out a lot of messages let's create a fancy sequence that and, and there is a, a mentality let me give you as much as i can up front in the hopes that you'll sift through it and decide you want to work with us right and so now you're saying let's slow it all down let's let's be very specific let's start segmenting more sharply and and what I, and I just want you to expand this a little bit and don't be afraid to pick up the phone. So have you found that, and I found that I've coached people that there are people that like to kind of hide behind the email or even social contact because they don't like picking up the phone. No one's going to want to take the call anyway. Now you gave a good example about the power of even a, a well-placed short voicemail that, it, that augments that email, makes the email safe to open, right? What else do you think uh, sellers should be thinking about in 2022 as they try to reach out to, to generate leads. Any any other big, you know, that's a big idea that you shared so far. So it doesn't have to be as big an idea, but any any other cool thought that we can take away as 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 listeners here? Uh, look, so, so I think, you know, the, 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 the social piece is really important. Um, we know that a lot of people Google you know, so so let's say you sent me so when if you send me an email that I'm slightly interested in, one of the things that I'm going to do is Google you straight away, right? And it's very likely that that's going to come up to your LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. So I still think there's significant room for improvement for most people to increase their social presence and have some level of authority. Now, even if you're brand new, you can you can create a level of authority, brand new in a in a role, you can create some authority based on what the business has done in the past. But you know, making it easy and safe for people to engage with you when they go to your LinkedIn profile so that you don't just look like a salesperson that's trying to look for a job. You actually, in fact, look like somebody who's got some chops when it comes to whatever you know that segment is that you're selling into. And don't be afraid to change those headlines 
depending on the vertical, right? So if you're set to use the go back to this um, example that I just made up and we've run with for the whole show, <laughs> you know, no. if you're selling software to recruiters, right, then your profile should say, I help recruiters, you know, stop Achieve doing this. this. Out of the other thing, right, right. And then when you change your segment and start selling to importers and exporters, you say, you know, I help West Coast importers and exporters of, you know, wine, like, right. do, you know, do this. Because the social stuff is reactive, not um, proactive, right? So if you go and visit a whole bunch of um, profiles as part of your prospecting in the recruitment space, guess who's going to be looking back at your profile? Not the importers, right? The recruiters right. are. Because right. it's reactive. You know, they're going to see Mark's looked at my profile. or go and look at, why is he looking at my profile? Well, hang on, something's popped into my inbox. Is that the same guy? I don't know. By the time you then send them the telephone call or make the telephone call or send the text message, they're like, okay, this is the same guy. All right? You then change that to importers and exporters and conduct that outbound. They're the ones that are going to come and look at your profile. The recruiters aren't going to. They've already right. done that. So that's, of course, that now that's if you're doing a, a batch, at, let's say for a couple of weeks, you're doing one type and then another couple of weeks or so. So you have time to turn that over. But I think that's, that's, that's excellent because you're right. I, it, there's no doubt that buyers today, if they, if, even if you got, well, let's put it this way. Once you've gotten their interest, they go to this very defensive validation stage, which who are who is this guy or, or this gal? And that's why when I get cold emails now that don't have uh, uh, a, a real email address, they don't have anything linkable on the page as far as like even like who's the URL, where's it from? And they're offering development services or whatever it is. It's very easy to ignore because it doesn't feel legit. It doesn't feel like a, it's coming from a place of integrity or honesty. So I really like what you're saying there that, you know, make sure your LinkedIn is friendly for that person you're targeting so they can actually say, okay, these people can actually help me. This, this person actually is, is, is aligned with what they're telling me they can do. And they're a real person because, you know, as we started with the show, there's so much automation now, you know, is, is the email, the person on the end of the email a real person or is it just, you know, we don't know yeah. <laughs> an email address. Wow. So. Well, Mark, this has been really great. I mean, just some really fast, fast stuff, getting you ready for 2022. Um, for those listening, really take this to, to heart. Mark really, you know, does this at scale, helps people figure this stuff out. Really appreciate you being on the show today. So, Mark, if somebody listening said, wow, I want to learn more about what, what Mark's all about, what he's doing, where should they go to find out more about you? Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, look, LinkedIn's the best bet for sure. Okay, so uh, feel free to connect with me. Do send me a little message though, because I get a lot of connection requests. Um, and typically, I don't accept too many of them. I'm really strong on building a network that's specific to my target market. But if you say, I, you know, you saw me on on um, on this podcast or on this show, I'll be I'll be happy to accept you. And uh, if you just look for Mark McGinnis, that's M C I double N E S, um, you should find me pretty easily. Fantastic, Mark McGinnis. Thank you again for joining us today on the Revenue Throughput Podcast. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks very much. Great time. Hey, thanks for listening to another episode of the Revenue Throughput Podcast. If you like this episode and if you like the series, make sure you subscribe below. And also, if you liked it, please do review it. When people are looking for something exciting to listen to, especially the kind of content we're bringing, which is practical insights for B2B companies, this is a place and a free resource that they can take advantage of. Let them know about it with your review. So subscribe, review, enjoy. Thanks again.